Next, here's some news about Nintendo Switch Online. Please take a look、oh. at this. I'm here, baby. I'm here. I'm awake. Yes! Yes! Cool, 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 cool. And. Yes! Yes! I'm 33 years old yelling about a. <laughs> game Boy game Stupid Game Boy. I decided I was going to make a video on whatever this Nintendo Direct was going to be, and halfway through I was like, I got nothing to talk about. And then, thank God, there were some Game Boy games. I've been dying for some more stuff on Nintendo Switch Online, so this was a very welcome addition. We got Game Boy, and I mean, absolutely blew my socks off. That we were getting Game Boy Advance too. I did not expect that to happen. That's part of the Nintendo Switch Online expansion pass pack, but that's totally fine. We need more value out of the expansion pack anyway. It's expensive, and not a lot of people think there's any value there. Oh, where are you going? Oh, and we lost him. That's about as much as he was willing to put into this. Okay, he doesn't care about Game Boy games. They're launching it with a lot of great stuff too. It looks like we're getting Tetris, which I think was the first game that I ever played. We got Super Mario Land 2. I don't know why not the first one, but I guess because the first one isn't that good of a game at all. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, which I think was necessary if you're going to have Game Boy games at all. Gargoyles Quest. You know, right before the direct started, I was talking about the games that I would like to play, and I've never played Gargoyles Quest. It's supposed to be like one of the best Game Boy games, so this is a Great opportunity for me to try it out. Game and Watch Gallery 3. I don't think anybody is excited for this one. Alone in the Dark, The New Nightmare. This one was completely out of left field. I've never heard of this game before, but it looks really, really good for a Game Boy Color game. This is at a time when there was a lot of weird ports of home console games for handheld systems, and it would usually lose like a lot of quality. They would almost always. Completely remake the game for a handheld system, and this one they tried to, to stay as faithful as they could. So I feel like this would be very interesting to try. Metroid 2: Samus Returns. I think this was a given that if they were going to release Game Boy games at all, this would be one of them. It's one of the best Game Boy games. And Wario Land 3, which I always use in my videos where I talk about Game Boy Color stuff because I have it, and it's. One of the best-looking Game Boy Color games, I guess. Just the color palette is really, really nice. It's, it's very pretty, especially on like those like upgraded IPS screens. And of course, Kirby's Dream Land, the first Kirby game ever. I think this was also a given that we would get this on Game Boy games on Nintendo Switch Online. And if you have the expansion pass, you're gonna get Game Boy Advance games. This is a much bigger deal. But before we get into that, we gotta listen. There was very slow January. We gotta do a little sponsored by Surfshark. We got it. We need Zim for that. Zim, come back. Where'd you go? This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Yeah, I know. I know. We've been trying to film the Surfshark ad, but I haven't been able to reach him. I'm at his apartment now. I'm gonna see what's up. It sounds like there's a lot of people here, and I wasn't invited. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna see what's up. What the hell, Zim? Zim, are you all right? Zim, Zim, what happened to you, man? I've been trying to reach you. What are you doing here? Get out of here, man. This lifestyle ain't worth it. It'll tear you apart. What happened to you, man? You had everything. You're right, Bob. I gotta get back to what makes me the happiest. Do you think you could still do it? I'm not sure. Let Let me give it a try. You know, Express VP. No, 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 nope, nah, -uh, nope.、Uh, try it again. Try it again. Why don't you try it again? Ah,、uh, I, I, I got it. Let me do it again. VPNs can help you change your location so that you can access content that might otherwise be blocked in your country. They can also help you encrypt your data so that nobody on your network can see what you're doing, not even your eyes. <laughs> oh God! I can, I can do it. I can do it. Just, just give me a chance, man. Surfshark can also help you send and receive files securely and protect your important data. If you want to give Surfshark a try, all you have to do is click the link in the description below and use code WolfDen for a whole 83% off plus three months for free. That's a whole lot of deal. 
All right, all right, looks like you still got it. Let's get you cleaned up and let's get out of here. There's only one way out of here. No, no, ah, uh, ah, uh, we can just walk. We're just gonna walk. It'll be okay, it'll be okay. We'll just walk out of here. Excuse me, excuse me. Super Mario Advance 4, Super Mario Bros. 3. I'm not even kidding. I literally just downloaded the ROM. I mean, acquired, I'm not, I'm not even putting up the front anymore. I stole the ROM. I literally just downloaded this because I had a version of it that didn't have the e-reader card levels. So this is just a port of Super Mario Brothers 3 for the Game Boy Advance. It's very confusing because it's called Super Mario Advance 4, but it had 38 additional levels Oh my God, right now a pack of e-reader cards on eBay is $150, $200. Jesus Christ, man. They did release those levels on the Wii U virtual console version of the game. That's the ROM that I stole. Otherwise, you would need to have a Game Boy Advance, buy these e-reader cards like the original DLC, and you'd also need an e-reader. Because you know that I love 2D Mario games, and I was thinking about it, and I've played pretty much every 2D Mario game, and I thought to myself, here's one of my favorite 2D Mario games, Super Mario Bros. 3, that has a bunch of levels that I've never been able to play because I've never had those e-reader cards. I have a copy of this game, it's just sealed in box, and I never wanted to open it. So these levels I'm gonna be going through tonight on twitch.tv slash Wolfden the day this video goes up. WarioWare Inc. is another game I'm probably actually gonna play on this thing. It's another one of the best Game Boy Advance games. Kudu Kudu Kududin. I don't, I don't know anything about this game. And of course, Mario Kart Super Circuit, which has not aged very well. Problem is with the Switch, we have Mario Kart 8. And how can you compare a 20 year old game to that. I mean, Mario Kart 8's pretty fucking old too now. And then Mario Luigi Superstar Saga, finally Nintendo is acknowledging a Mario and Luigi games again. That is just Daffy Duck. Did you guys see that? That was just Daffy Duck. And Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. I'm sure that game's great. I really have no interest in playing that. And that's just what you can play right now. In the future, they're gonna be releasing, you know, more stuff like Oracle of Agents, Oracle of Seasons, Pokemon, the trading card game, Kirby Tilt and Tumble, which is an interesting one because I'm pretty sure that has a gyro in it and they're gonna have to do some development on the ROM, ooh. And for Game Boy Advance, you got Metroid Fusion, Kirby, the Amazing Mirror, Fire Emblem, F-Zero, Maximum Velocity, and Golden Sun. Those are incredible games. I think Metroid Fusion might be the best Game Boy Advance game. They did an absolutely phenomenal job with the library. And I don't mind that it's collected all in a subscription model. I know some people would rather it be like a virtual console situation where you can just buy each one individually, but I like being able to dip my toe in a couple of games that I probably wouldn't have purchased on my own. Like for example, Gargoyles. And these games are multiplayer. You can play online because it is Nintendo Switch Online. The only original Game Boy game you're gonna be playing online is Tetris probably. And for Game Boy Advance, you have Super Mario Kart, which I tried. And the online was interesting because it was the whole link cable thing. So we were both controlling our own screen. It's still a little antiquated how you actually get into a game with somebody, but once you're there, one person's the host and they pick the game and then you set up the link cable on your own individual ROM, like each person has their own instance of the game running. And that's how I found out that Mario Kart uh, runs like absolute This is- Oh my God, I, I suck I at this. Hate, I hate this. This is horrible. <laughs> this isn't, I hate this game. The games look really good. I appreciate a lot of the options that they gave us through the Nintendo Switch Online app. But of course, in their own little Nintendo way, they, they didn't give us enough. They, it could have been a lot better. There's an option called Reproduce Classic Feel, which gives it the grid lines that an original Game Boy has. It's a little more noticeable on an actual Game Boy Color, and it's noticeable on a, an original Game Boy Advance. Usually, I'm not a fan of fake scan lines. I usually like the clean pixel look, but with these games showing so big on a monitor or TV, it is actually really nice 
to see those grid lines. They did a good job recreating that. The problem is when you get outside of the Game Boy Color color palette. They have the Game Boy Pocket color palette for original Game Boy games, and they also have an original Game Boy Pea Soup color palette. I think the original Game Boy color palette that they have is a little dull. I've seen it done better on emulators and some of the portable emulation stuff that I have, and even on DMG mods. But when you click on that reproduce classic feel and you introduce those grid lines, it dulls the whole image. Usually on other devices that have scan lines or these sorts of grid lines like this, it will brighten the image to compensate for those scan lines because you're adding a lot of black to the image. So you want to brighten up what's behind those grid lines, but they didn't do that. So the whole image just look, looks dull. It, it's not good. I would only use reproduce classic feel on Game Boy Advance or on Game Boy Color because those two color palettes have white in them. They're, they're just brighter. Game Boy Pocket and original Game Boy are dull just by nature and then they get even duller when you add those grid lines. The only other visual option is display with small screen. Whoa, why, 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 <laughs> why? I don't get it. You know, at first I thought this looked really stupid, but then I thought about it. Playing something like Metroid 2 with the screen a little smaller actually makes a lot of sense because playing it blown up, it feels really weird. It just feels very claustrophobic. And for some reason, having the screen smaller feels a lot better when you're like taking a step back when you're a little bit away from it. But the real reason they did that was something to do with scaling, I think. So the original Game Boy is 160 by 144. The full size here is 1120 by 1008, which is seven times scaling. And the smaller one is 800 by 720, which is five times scaling. I'm not sure why these are the two that they went with. They're both odd numbers. So splitting them in half for the portable 720 resolution isn't really gonna help or hurt. Maybe they just thought it looked the nicest, but that's why we get some letterboxing here is because they wanted to keep that perfect round seven times scaling. And Game Boy Advance is 240 pixels by 160 pixels. So this is six times scaling versus four times scaling when you make it smaller. The very final grievance that I have is of course the control scheme. It's fine, but I would really love the option to use Y and B to run and jump as Mario. Both the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance only have A and B buttons. So it works kind of like NES Nintendo Switch Online where B and A act like they would on the NES or on the Game Boy or on the Game Boy Advance. And X can be a substitute for the B button. So. It's fine to hold the controller up here like this instead of down here. You get used to it very easily. I just wish I could remap it because why the f can't I remap things in 2023? I'm getting really nitpicky though. Otherwise, overall, I like everything that we're seeing here. I think this is a great selection of games and it could only go up from here. There's a lot more they can add. A lot of people are very upset that there's no Pokemon games. How could you do Game Boy and Game Boy Advance without Pokemon. I really hope that the Pokemon company does something on their own. I wouldn't mind the Pokemon company releasing, you know, red, blue, yellow, green, and like gold and silver and whatever in like different packages. One of my favorite Game Boy Advance games that's up there with Metroid Fusion is Mega Man Zero. That's already on the Switch in a collection that Capcom made. So we're probably not gonna see that in this, unfortunately. Konami also put the Castlevania games in their own collection. Those are also some of the best games for the Game Boy Advance. So I don't think we'll be seeing that in this collection, unfortunately. I wonder if Advance Wars will ever come over there because that's coming to the Switch anyway. The Sonic Advance games are incredible and Sega's been pretty good with collaborating with the Nintendo on the Switch Online. So maybe we'll see that. There is big potential for Mother 3. I think that might actually happen.
I think that'll be a huge drop that happens sometime, maybe E3 time, or maybe even next year. It'll be a, a big mind blowing thing. Also Wario Land 2, there, there's a lot more stuff that I suspect is gonna be coming, that, it, which is great because Nintendo Switch Online has had a pretty good library, but they've been really slow rolling out new games. And the, the ones that have come out for NES and SNES and Sega Genesis have not been the best lately. They've been really scraping the bottom of the barrel. So I'm very happy that we finally got a new console. I really hope they update the apps for all of the Nintendo Switch Online systems so that we can have some sort of controller configuration, even if it's just different preset options for the sake of GoldenEye, just so people will be able to, you know, play GoldenEye in the modern age. It is very difficult. As somebody who grew up with it, Hard man, with with the with the axes being inverted like that, I can't do it. Anyway, it's out now. Go try it. Thanks for being here. Let me know what you guys think about the Nintendo Switch Online, uh, Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games. Is there any ones that I left out that you would like to see, or anything that you would like to play right now? Leave it in the comments below. Add me on Twitter, any and all this other social media garbage. Thank you, Surf Shark for helping spot this video. I'm so happy we were able to get Zim back out of his uh, little downward spiral. Of course, I'll be on twitch.tv slash wolfden tonight playing one of these games. The most important thing that you can do here is just subscribe right here to this channel so you know when there's new videos and stuff and share this video with a friend, a friend who has a Nintendo Switch and needs a reason to jump back into Nintendo Switch online again. This is kind of an impromptu video because this news is hot. I'm working on a video on the Ambernick RG35XX, which will be out sometime next week. And it's great. And this isn't going to stop me from playing that because, I mean, you know, it's apples and oranges. Thank you guys very much. Have yourself a very good week.